So we're going to share um, yeah, some of these. Uh, we're going to go back to Menti, and we really want to ask you to share some of the reflections that you've had uh, from the whole session that we've had today. Maybe you want to share a key point, something that you will remember, or maybe a question that you still have and that you want to take back, back to your work after this event. Um, you can also put it in the chat. And yeah, just, just go for it. Every family and their circumstances are different. It's all about balance. All the issues around where you are able to choose, are able or choose to shop, the community benefits of smaller shops versus increased cost. Everyone has different priorities. Work, location, and family all influence food choices. Can we do more meal plans on a budget for different size families? Um, and I think Chelsea will, will chat about that and opportunities for next step in a bit. Uh, having dignity to make choices doesn't mean these choices are healthy. How important choices for our well being and dignity? Priorities change regularly. Large percentage of people, especially in rural areas or places without a nearby shop, uh, was surprised about how expensive the weekly cost was. Food choices aren't always wide due to location and offerings by retail. Can you scroll down a bit, Irina, please? What are we encouraged to do by the options we have available to us? More needs to be done in terms of wages to ensure every individual can afford to have dignity when it comes to food choices. Looking at categorizing slash cost breakdowns is helpful in how we help reduce the cost in each of those. For example, providing more fruit and veg through our larders to bring down costs for families. What is socially acceptable or normal is a huge factor I hadn't considered before. Don't assume there are many factors affecting what's viable and affordable for people. Everyone should have the right to choose what they want to eat, but cliffhanger consideration should always be given to how the food is produced and transported. We need to stop celebrating a race to the bottom in terms of quality and prices. Uh, so I'm going to pass on to Chelsea now as those keep coming in. Thanks very much, Diana. I know we were having a really interesting conversation in our room and I hope you were as well in all of yours. We are just going to, I'm just going to share a couple more things before we finish up today. Um, firstly, by reminding us of where we started from and a reminder of our shared vision of a Scotland where everyone is able to afford the food that keeps them healthy and well. And as Deanna said, there are um, a couple of things about our next steps that I wanted to share with you as well and to give a bit of a broader context to the first stage of the work that we've been really exploring today. But the next stage of the work is about, well, what do we do now that we have these shopping lists? What does, you know, what was all that effort and what was all, the, all of that for? There are tools for us to use. There are tools for us to use to help us understand whether we're progressing towards the right space society that we want to live in. There are a tool for us to use at a local level and there are a tool for us to use at a national level. Next year, this year, very soon, we'll start doing work at local levels, and I would love for you to be involved in this, um, where we start to take the shopping list that we've developed and price them out in different parts of the country. So first of all, we want to know, are the items on the list available here in our community? And if they're not, well, then we sort of just have to stop and talk about what's going on in terms of food availability in our area. Um, but if they are, what do they cost? And what do they cost in comparison to the list that we've been discussing and the prices that we've discussed um, when we price them at, at Tesco online? 
then what additional things add to that cost, like public transport, like you will have been discussing a little bit just now, um, and start to think, what could we do locally to help alleviate some of these pressures that people are feeling? So what, how can we be working with our transport partners and people in the planning departments and all sorts of different parts of um, what we have available to us to make it easier for people to access the food that they would choose? At a national level, it becomes a tool that we can start monitoring and keeping track of um, prices as they change over time. So as I mentioned, um, when we costed this in November, um, we then costed it again this week, there's already been a change for the families that we've been working with today. There was a change of about 5.25% for the small family and close to 7% of an increase for the large family. So that's just for the ones that we've priced in Tesco. And um, I haven't sort of done the same calculations for the other and um, for what it would cost to eat out and those kinds of things. But we know that supermarket prices um, are increasing. And so it gives us a way of sort of monitoring some of that over time. But it would also, it starts a conversation with our national um, decision makers about how it compares to family incomes and the kinds of policies that they have available to them and um, to be able to support people directly. So the Scottish child payment, for example, comes directly into people's homes, into their budgets to help alleviate some of the rising costs of living. How will we know whether it's helping to fit the right gap if we don't know what the gap is and how that's changing over time? So that's why we would want to be measuring some of these things um, at a national level. So this isn't a tool for individuals to help them, you know, budget better or eat more healthily or those kinds of things. Um, but it is a tool to help decision makers understand what people value and what is needed to improve the affordability of this diet. So as I say, the next step is to work with local groups and networks across Scotland to start measuring this cost locally. If you are interested in doing this, we would love to hear from you. Pop your um, name in the chat or send me an email and um, we would, we'll be getting these groups going in the next couple of months and we would love to have you take part and take a look at what, what the food costs are in your area. What, how does it differ in one part of your local authority um, to another? What kinds of shopping routes do people need to take in order to get there? It's going to be a fun set of activities. We're really looking forward to it um, and I hope you will um, get involved. So that's me. I'm passing back over to my apologies. I don't remember who is to you. Irene is going to tell us a little bit more, I think, about our next event. Yeah, just to remind you to sign up for next week's event. I think, you know, I'm not able to share my my screen if I if we are recording somehow. I can't hear you, Irina. Can you hear me? Right. I'm, I'm afraid I can't share. I just wanted to show you our poster for next week, but uh, just to remind you to come along next week, uh, we will be discussing the strategies uh, the Scottish government and local authorities are already taking to reduce the cost of living for people through universal free school meals and extending uh, free transport. So that's going to be the final of our series of events um, from last year and this year. So we really look forward to seeing you in the uh, as well. And thank you for coming. Anything else? I think also we have a main team meter, kind of like some, if you have some feedback about the, this event in particular or other events that you can give us some feedback that would be really, really helpful. Um, is that it, yeah? I think so. Thank you so much, everybody, for coming. Um, our, yeah, as you, as Rena said, sorry, I'll just pop this up one more time. Um, and we'll, this is, sorry, I don't know why, there we go. Um, you can check out our website um, for more information about the previous events and materials for this event. You can sign up there if you want. And um, please feel free to get in touch with us at dignity at nourishscotland.org.uk if you've got any follow up questions about today's event um, or, or the work that we've been doing generally. There's lots of resources on our website um, for you to check out, but we're also ha happy to hear from you. And um, so I would just want to say a really big thank you to everybody who is involved today. We had loads of um, members of the dignity 
community advisory team, as well as the Our Right to Food community advisors um, and some additional volunteers who are helping to facilitate the discussions today. I hope everybody enjoyed the, um, the, the small chats that we had. Um, we are so grateful for people's um, time and participation and attention today. Please do feel free to get in touch with us through all the different ways that we've shared today. Um, and thanks very much. If